Hi everyone! In this video we're going to solve the following exact differential equation sine of y minus y sine of x dx plus cosine of x plus x cosine of y minus y dy equals zero. Well, we start by determining or confirming that, that we're looking at the exact differential equation. So that's step one. Okay, so to verify that this equation is exact, we're going to take function that stands in front of dx, and this function we should denote by m of xy, and we're going to find its partial derivative with respect to y. So for the testing purposes, we, use, we always use the opposite variable um, compared to the one that, that's in this differential. Let's try it. I am treating y as the variable and x as the constant. So y is the variable. Sine of y is cosine of y. Next, y is the variable. Sine of x is the constant. So derivative of just y with a constant, we drop y and we just leave the constant, the coefficient, minus sine of x. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that, but with the function that stands next to dy, we call this function n of xy. And I'm going to take the partial derivative of function n with respect to the opposite variable, dx. So I'm treating x as the variable. Cosine of x, uh, derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Now, x cosine of y, that is the variable, that is the constant. I drop the variable, I keep the coefficient plus cosine of y. And then minus y, well, that part is the constant in this case. So, I, I uh, derivative of that is zero, right? Minus zero. I'll, I'll just, keep, you know, I'm not going to write it. And now we have to compare the results. Are they the same or not? Yes, they are the same. They are in different order, but I mean, I can see that they are the same. Cosine, cosine, both positive, and then sine and sine negative. Yes, they're equal. Equal, that means that we're looking at the exact differential equation. Let me remind you that the exact differential equation has this left-hand side in a special form, and that form is such that both m of xy and n of xy are partial derivatives of the same function f. And that function f is the solution to this equation, so our goal is to find it. So in the next step, in step 2, we're going to find that function f of xy by taking the partial derivative of that function f with respect to x, and that's this expression, and uh, obtain its antiderivative. In other words, integrate that. So I am integrating m of xy with respect to x, dx. So that is integral of sine of y minus y sine of x dx. Okay, so let's think. Again, I always have to remind myself because otherwise it's easy to get confused. x is the variable and y is the constant. So since y is the constant, sine of y is a constant as well. So what will be the antiderivative of the constant if it was 10? Well, integral of 10 would be 10x. In this case, it's going to be sine of y times x. The only thing that I'll put x in the front so I'm not confused what's inside of sine, so it's x sine of y. Minus. Here I have constant and then sine of x. So that constant will stay there um, and I'll just have to do integral of sine of x and integral of that is going to be negative cosine. So, and since I already have negative here, so negative, another negative gives me, gives me plus positive y cosine of x, like that. And we usually put plus a constant, plus c, but in this case, when we do this partial integration, um, our constant is not going to look like c, it's going to look like a function of g, since y is treated as the, as the constant, um, like that, in this matter. Okay, so we obtained function f of x, y, well, we almost obtained it, right? So we know everything about it, except this last piece, and that our goal will be to find it. So the way we'll find it, and that's going to be 
well, the, the last two steps. So in the next step, what we'll do, we're going to take function f and obtain its partial derivative with respect to y. Well, the partial derivative of function f with respect to y is this function n of x, y. So we know what it equals to. And through that step, we will be able to kind of get closer to the function g of, um, g of y. So let's, let's see how it's going to look like. So I'm going to take function f that I just obtained in step 2 and find its partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, again, let's, let's think here and focus. y is the variable, x is the constant. Okay, so that is the variable and that's the constant. So my constant will stay. And then sine of y is cosine. Uh, derivative of sine of y is cosine of y. Next, here I have um, y cosine of x. y is the variable, cosine of x is the constant. In this case, the derivative is just dropping that variable and leaving the constant the coefficient, so plus cosine of x. And then plus, since here I have just general form g of y, uh, its derivative will be simply writing g prime of y. So it's derivative of this function, g. So that's what we need to find, right? And again, I'm going to make a note here. So what we just obtained, the partial derivative of function f with respect to y, is exactly n of x, y. That's what partial derivative of f with respect to y is. So it equals to this expression. So all that is n of x, y. And that means that I'll take, you know, what I got here, x cosine of y plus cosine of x plus g prime of y. And I'll set it equal. I'm sorry, you couldn't see it, right? So right here, I just copied what I got here. And I will set it equal to n of x, y from my equation. This expression x of uh, cosine of x plus x cosine of y minus y. Okay, here it is. Cosine of x plus x cosine of y minus y. And I'm doing that because now once I get g prime by itself, derivative of g, I should be able to find g itself by taking antiderivative or integrating. Let's see if anything cancels. Yeah, so here I have x cosine of y on the left, and I have exactly the same term on the right, so they will cancel. You know, I can see that if I subtract one of them from both sides. And then same with cosine of x. Those two will cancel, since they're on the opposite sides of the equation. And basically, I'm just left with g prime of y equals negative y. So that's what g prime, or derivative of g is, and knowing that I can easily find function g itself. That will be step four. So to find function g itself, I'm going to take antiderivative, which is the same as the integral of negative y dy. That is negative y squared over 2. So that is function g of y, and I'm going to place it here. We found it. So uh, it's time to write down the solution. By the way, I'm going to mention here that solution will always have this form, that function f of x, y that you found equals constant c, arbitrary constant c. So that's a family of solutions. So then solution is function f of x, y. It's right here. It's right here, and then g of y. So it's x sine of y plus y cosine of x minus y squared over 2 equals c. So that is the solution. Family of solutions, I should say. And we can always check. It's uh, In this case, there's a good way, an easy way of checking whether it's the right solution, because if we take partial derivative of this left-hand side with respect to x, we should obtain m of x, y, like this expression from, 
from the equation and if I take my solution or I should say the left hand side of my solution and obtain the partial derivative of that with respect to y that should be equal to this expression and of x y so I'll leave that for you today to check but yeah these are the steps for solving the exact differential equation